This is Chernobylite. We're taking a look at the game on the Nintendo Switch, and this is sponsored by Untold Tales. Be sure to like the video. Subscribing is great as well. So the game that I've taken a look at on the Xbox side of things, the PlayStation side of things, now arrives on the Nintendo Switch on Friday the 13th, December 2024 exciting. It allows you to enjoy the full complete edition of the experience, something that is modeled off of many real-life locations in Chernobyl, as the team actually traveled there between 2019 and 2020 with 3D scanning tools in order to actually capture the essence, style, and scope of this location. So this is something that is a non-linear uh, kind of science fiction survival horror RPG. There's a lot going on. You'll be exploring the uh, Chernobyl exclusion zone and uncovering the truth of your tortured past. Uh, it, it's actually quite interesting and a lot going on behind the hood, but this is the complete edition of the game that they moved over to the Nintendo Switch. So something that you can enjoy very easily on the go, uh, literally on the go in the game or on the go with your Nintendo Switch or also on the big screen as well, right? As the Nintendo Switch allows you to have that versatility, uh, basically being able to enjoy it in multiple places. This complete edition of the game is the full base game, plus all the content updates to date, including extra story missions, new locations, additional weapons, uh, unique game modes, and more. So, as I kind of mentioned, it is a sci-fi survival horror role-playing game uh, from the developers The Farm 51. You get to venture forth into the wasteland of Chernobyl's exclusion zone as Igor. You are a physicist and an ex-employee of the power plant. You're returning to Pripyat to investigate the mysterious disappearance of your fiancé. And this is 30 years after the fact. So decades have passed. You're still haunted by the memory and the appearances and the ghostly figures of your uh, fiancé. And you're trying to figure out what happened. Where is she? Is she still around? And it gives off those vibes where it's sort of like, you know, stalker-like, a metro-like, uh, kind of those sort of gameplay elements, but with a bit of a twist where you are managing a team, uh, trying to survive, uh, crafting, building, and then on top of that, the management of your team in the wasteland and at the base, try to keep them going as your squad grows or shrinks, depending on the choices and the actions that you make throughout the game. Uh, sort of like a bit of a roguelike in the sense of uh, maybe a little bit of replay in there, as you kind of have a sense of linear focus in your objective, but yet the non-linear sense of the open freedom and how you tackle situations and scenarios. The game also has a wide variety of difficulty options and tweaks that you can make, whether you want something that's a little bit more tuned to pure survival, or if you want something that's maybe a little bit more narrative driven, uh, the game kind of gives you the options uh, both ways through, which I think is rather exciting. If you're looking for something that is actually a little bit different, it does have a very unique sense of giving you narrative and then kind of giving you freedom and then interjecting a little bit more narrative and some cool, again, sci-fi type things, weird fantasy like monstrous creatures and appearances. And then on top of that, you've got this uh, magical sort of portal-like tool that will allow you to transcend between environments and locations, which is really, really quite neat. Actually, the whole concept of it is that there is this material that's very special, the Chernobylite, which will allow you to uh, engage with this mysterious uh, world between worlds, a uh, wormhole of sorts. And you'll see that in the gameplay as it continues along here. So you'll be battling it out against uh, various hostile military forces, other scavengers, mutated creatures, and of course, the radiated environment, which is uh, its own special problem. It's an adventure of conspiracy, horror, obsession with love, and of course survival on top of that as you'll be again crafting and building stuff. If you're kind of a fan of the Fallout 4 kind of like building based stuff, uh, this game actually has a really interesting mechanic around that where you actually are like building stuff in a base, taking care of the health of your squad and making sure everyone's fed and it's, it's a lot more complex than one might actually expect for this sort of experience. And it, from a, a technical standpoint, it does seem sub-720p. 
uh, 30 FPS is like the target here, though you will uh, encounter drops in the open world. And uh, for the Switch, uh, when you really get those story beats, it's not too bad. It's actually uh, decent looking and running, and the open world is a little bit more of a, a challenge. But I would say for a, a late running Nintendo Switch game, it is about what you would expect uh, in that regard. And I, I think they do a very good job of condensing the experience while not actually removing any elements of it for the Switch in terms of making sure the full scope of the world is there, the settings, the geometry, the setup of it, just toned down so it actually is running on the Nintendo Switch as this game is actually uh, quite ambitious and quite detailed. As I, again, I've said, I've seen this on the, the Series X side of things, on the PlayStation 5 side of things. And I've really seen what this game can offer. And it's, it's a pretty cool experience. So as I was mentioning, uh, the base building and crafting elements of it, you're able to customize your home base to serve all the expeditions you go on, the, the operations and the setups that you have, whether they are story focused or just kind of missions you need to go on to gather things, such as like uh, collecting maybe bullets or collecting uh, health or food. And with your squad, the, the larger your team is, the more diverse selections of things you can go on. So maybe send one of your buddies to go and gather food while you go gather medicine. Or one of your teammates may be sick and needs like a recovery day instead of being sent out there into the dangerous uh, lands beyond. Uh, that really, that judgment is up to you and how you want to, again, tackle the situation and whether you not want to risk things as certain missions have lower odds of survival and higher chances of success. And that's something you're going to have to tune. As you expand and upgrade your base and your group of companions, uh, you'll use workstations to craft uh, various weapons, tools, traps, and things that will allow you to have an edge when you're out there on your excursions. As I mentioned, uh, resource and team management is a very big part of this game. You're going to be recruiting uh, various companions and attempting to keep them going, uh, dealing with problems, making sure the base keeps everybody happy and going, and you'll have to make choices that will adjust how, uh, not only whether or not they actually live and survive, but also whether or not they are happy or pleased with what you're doing. Again, going into that element of the complexity of what is happening behind the scenes, there's a lot more to this game than kind of meets the eye. And when you're out there in the zone, uh, leading into this from the other elements I had mentioned, every day is a different challenge. It's not an easy going place, unless you adjust the difficulty a little bit too. Again, making it easier or harder, whatever you want to go for. So during your runs, you're going to have to choose how you tackle these situations. A lot of them, you can use stealth. The game actually includes, and I think you kind of saw that a little bit earlier there. Uh, you can kind of peek around edges, you can look into the environment, you can really see uh, how you want to tackle it. You can kind of move around and be quiet and stealthy and keep out of it. You can choose to be a little bit more aggressive and combative as long as you make sure that you yourself have the supplies to heal and not necessarily like have injuries and things like that. And uh, this is going to be quite a journey, especially if you, if you face more dangerous problems and choices along the way because... You know, obviously, if you get injured, you're going to have to heal up, and yeah, there's there's danger, but it gives you a good amount of management, a quick selection tool for gathering or changing up your weapons. It's, it's pretty, like, there's a lot to it, but it gives you more than enough necessary tools and options in order to get what you need. Like, I've got a little bit of a resource locator in my hand here, and what this would have basically allowed me to do is ping the environment and be like, oh, there's plastics here or this plant here. It, it's not too hard to find what you need. It's just whether or not you are taking the time to make sure you're gathering what you're after. And as I had mentioned, it, it does balance these pretty well between having something that is story and something that is survival or also interactions. And then you get these like hub type areas that you get to visit that have more freedom in how you approach the environment and those are obviously a little bit more demanding spaces in terms of the technical side of things. And as I had also gone over, the game really is uh, non-linear. Uh, there's storytelling, there's focus, but uh, it kind of leads way into replayability. The idea is that you play the game and you enjoy it, and you kind of go in and you play it a different way, as every thing will be a little bit different based on the choices that you make and whether or not 
people actually live or if they trust you and want to help you out or if you know you're going to have enough to actually survive or you're going to be able to research things in order to give you the advantage you need in order to handle stuff there's a lot going on in this it, it really is surprising like you would be genuinely intrigued like if you haven't played this game before it's it's really really quite cool especially if you've played the similar type games that are out there uh, this one I do genuinely believe does a nice little uh, mismatch of, uh, or more of like a mixing, I guess you would say, of various genres and concepts out there. Like the Stalker series is a little too intensive when it comes to management and dealing with the hostilities of the world. And then, you know, Metro is a lot more story-focused, a lot more narrative-driven. And this kind of almost uh, lands itself between the two in the terms of being like, hey, you do need to survive, but unless you, like, really crank it up and you want to make it so that it's hardcore for you to deal with, uh, this one is a lot more welcoming and friendly, and just, it has its own sort of style and coolness and also weirdness to it. Because, yeah, it's, it's creepy. It is a horror-like game. There are monsters and creatures and weird things that happen and trippy effects and stuff like that. But it's also like engaging and welcoming enough that you're not going to feel a level of hostility to being able to actually enjoy playing the game. And that's where I kind of find that this sort of sits in between there as something that is really, to me, quite intriguing and a fair bit of fun. Like I said, I've, I've gone back to this one a few times. And it is really cool that you can actually take this experience on the go. That's the biggest thing here. Uh, with this experience is that it's actually something with it being on the Nintendo Switch it's a little bit more intuitive from the concept of being able to go out and about and actually be like hey you know let's enjoy this game and, and play a little bit while we're out here then maybe when you're back home you can plug it into the big TV and kind of have fun with it there and it's just really welcoming from a bunch of different perspectives and, you know, it just allows you to have that sort of uh, functionality where you get to enjoy a game. And I mean, if you've been playing on the Nintendo Switch for however many years, you're probably used to that concept. It's just kind of neat to, to see an experience like this game where you were sort of like, I don't know, traditionally kind of locked. And now you can pick it up and go anywhere and do all the, you know, combat, the stealth, the management stuff. And, you know, kind of play everywhere you kind of want to and, and that and I, I think they do a really good job in terms of actually making it run on the switch all these years on because you know we're, we're definitely reaching towards the uh the later times of the, uh, the nintendo switch as, as a console and stuff well, obviously it's going to be around for many many more years but you know the, this is typically when you get more demanding type things is towards the end of a lifespan of a platform so kind of cool that you you got this game on there it's Kind of what I what I didn't really expect because they did do some really interesting, uh, like high end console sort of updates to this one to kind of really push things. And I was like, oh wow, this is a really cool looking game. And you know, it, it is also very uh, mature from a narrative standpoint, and you know, kind of content wise in that it's, it's kind of cool and creepy. And yeah, like the goal here is to really provide uh, a, a realistic styled environment where you actually feel like you're in this sort of area and then there's also the, the narrative element too of your character Igor there or Igor and you can uh, do little bits of choosing how the story is presented to you with like other subtitles or different kinds of voiceover um, those options are present to you right off the bat and you can kind of choose how you want to engage with this because it very much is a journey of this character who is kind of a little bit of a different choice because it is someone that is, is quite smart in terms of understanding you know being a physicist and that and having this mysterious powerful resource and then the trippiness of you know your fiance and all that that part of the game is actually really really quite intriguing that's why it's, it's so funny that there's so much going on here because it's sort of you know from one angle you care about the character and know the character and kind of want to figure out what's going on with that story but from another perspective you're like oh i want to survive and then another perspective you're like oh i'm managing the base or and then another perspective is like oh i'm managing the team yeah there's uh there's a lot going on there and then of course like improving all your tools and resources and 
having your companions be helpful and go on your missions and stuff. It's cool. They've they've really actually put together something that is is quite neat. And and furthermore, it's it's really really rather exciting that uh, we've got a a sequel down the road coming up too, which I am uh, very very excited about to see where that kind of goes. So it, it is actually kind of the perfect time if you've been thinking about getting into this and kind of getting used to it and if you want to explore more of it you know you've got that coming on the horizon so this is a great time to sort of get into the universe of it get used to it and enjoy what it has to offer and then also kind of be like oh we've got a little bit more on the horizon it's actually really nice from that perspective too where you can literally be like oh and play a little bit of it get used to it you know work your way through here get an idea of the game and then oh uh, you know not too far down the road uh, you've got yourself a, a follow-up to uh, enjoy uh, more of that, which I think is is really genuinely exciting that that is is a thing for this game. So, yeah, I would definitely say it's uh, an intriguing game, one that I have enjoyed taking a look at and revisiting across all of the different consoles. Uh, seriously. Yeah, it's, it's really, to me, it's always fascinating when I get to sit here and take a look at games and see how they look from one end of the the console platforms to the other end and just seeing how they kind of work across different platforms and what sort of choices and everything they have to make to get things running on different har hardware obviously that is a a big thing here and i would say that the experience translates relatively well from platform to platform to platform and it, it is neat to get this one running on the switch because it is actually a game that is pretty demanding in terms of the detail and how much is in the world and what's going on with it and all the complex systems below. And I, yeah, I, I think they kind of compiled something that is uh, technically demanding for sure, but also something where you get that full vision available on the Nintendo Switch and you're not necessarily feeling like you're missing out on stuff. and. You know, at this point, getting the full experience and everything like that. I, I kind of like that for the Nintendo Switch games. A lot of them that I revisit, that I visited before, when they do come to Switch, we do actually get a full experience and a full setup. And I, I think to me that's quite exciting where it's like, okay, yeah, it's a little bit later on, but hey, we've actually got the full setup and experience that we can enjoy here. And I, I think that's really, really quite exciting. So, uh, yeah. Chernobylite on the Nintendo Switch. Hopefully this was a good little showcase of the game in action. Gave you an idea of what it has to offer gameplay-wise. The things you can do, the interactions you can make within the game. A little bit of the story focus side of it. A little bit of the regular gameplay world here. Because this would be the area you're kind of going through. I love the intense... Uh, bleeding out and stuff that I'm, I'm basically dealing with here because you'd have to go and find you know certain resources and stuff and <laughs> kind of craft and you know take care of yourself because that's the the danger here is you know making sure that your character your character body is uh, okay and, and survivable otherwise you're gonna perish and that in itself is kind of fun i i like what they've got going on with this game it's it's really intriguing because it gives you a little bit of freedom but it keeps it tight enough that you're not feeling as though you're sort of off out of the way and feeling like you have to do all this work or anything like that like there's effort involved there's choice involved there's tactical play there's interesting gameplay there's character there's narrative yeah, it's, it's got a little bit of everything, and I, I think that comes together for a very satisfying package, and I myself very much looking forward to the follow-up uh, game in this, this series, and I'm sure that'll be something that we will be revisiting down the... Well, I guess visiting for the first time down the road, but this is obviously a game, too, that is, since it's so technically demanding and that, it'll be one I'll be revisiting on, on platforms to kind of see how it, like, looks and runs in the future, too, as it is something that is... A pretty cool game again uh, it's available for the Nintendo switch as of Friday the 13th and in December 2024 and of course onwards you can enjoy it anytime you stumble upon maybe this video or something like that I mean if you come this far and I, I hope you enjoyed this showcase of the experience get an idea of how it's running how it's looking and everything like that 
And uh, again, liking the video is great, subscribing is great as well, and I'll see you out there trying to survive in the world uh, beyond the portal, I guess.